Yeah. So uh, let's review what we had about the, the Miller algorithm. Um, basically, uh, I take um, I take two points U and V on on the curve. Remember, the setting is that we work over algebraically closed field of characteristic P. And um, uh, uh, P is uh, is co prime to N. So we know that uh, that uh, e, e N is uh, integers modulo N times itself. And and now we. Uh, we look, we we want to describe the Miller algorithm in a geometric way because it will help us uh, uh, conceptualize what what the process is. So I'm I'm defining the the line between U and V for for any any two points U and V that are distinct. So U is is not equal to V and also non non zero points. Um, I I look at the 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 line between U and V. Uh, uh, basically, we we went through this uh, this this kind of stuff in equations. I mean, a, an equation of a, a non-vertical line is always y. I mean, y minus um, uh, m x minus b equals zero, right? Or if you want. The line itself is just a polynomial. So it's it's a polynomial in two variables. Uh, where M and B are, are uh, determined by, by the, the coordinates of U and V. And the divisor of such a line will always, I mean, th this is a, a polynomial, right? Polynomial in, in two variables, but nevertheless a polynomial. So a, a polynomial always has a, a pole at infinity, right? Uh, because if, if you substitute x equals infinity and y equals infinity, you get infinity, infinity or minus infinity. Um, so, so we always, I mean, this is, uh, 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 goes back to uh, what we talked about, the, how to classify all the possible divisors of, of a line, a line a, a, a viewed as a rational function. So this, um, this fits into this pattern. And, and, and since we know that the line um, passes through U and V, then we know it must, let's say U and V are distinct and, and, and non-zero, then we know that the line has to pass through a minus u plus v, right? That's that's what what's written here. So when I look at the set of zeros of, of this rational function l u v, well, e, 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 u is a, is a zero of of this function. V is also a zero, and they are distinct. So it's I, I put them in separate brackets, and and also minus u plus v is is a zero of this uh, rational function and since i know that this is the divisor of a rational function i mean a, a principal divisor i know that the degree of the divisor has to be zero so i know and, and i also know that it has a pole it has a unique pole at at the point at infinity so i know that the divisor has to be u, I mean brackets u plus brackets v plus brackets of minus u plus v minus 3o. And the reason the reason I know that is that I have to have a 3 in, in the coefficient of o because I have no other pole and the sum of the, the coefficients have to be zero. Is this, uh, is this clear? Is it uh, 
So just one question. So this, I mean, you know that the sum has to be zero because we are kind of assuming that this divisor is principal or, or it's another. Yeah, principle. I mean, okay. it's not we, I mean, a principal divisor is is a, a divisor that is the, uh, obtained as the divisor of some rational function. So okay, if, right. if I write a div of LUV, LUV is a rational function. In fact, I, 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 I can give you the explicit formula. The exp it's it's a it's a rational function with the one in the denominator, right? Because it's just a, a polynomial. It's not a quotient of polynomials. So, so just to to be sure. So the the line of thought is that so we are working with a divisor of a rational function. Hence, this is a principal divisor. Yeah. And because of that, uh, by, de by definition, principal is, is simply a synonym to say that it is a divisor of some rational function. Okay. And, and then uh, by the properties of a principal divisor, you know that uh, the sum has to be three. Uh, sorry, it has to be zero. And, yeah. and because of that, you know that you have this. Multiplicity yeah. of, of on this one. Okay, okay, good. I, I know two things. I mean, oh, 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 let's call this uh, D, DL. Uh, I know two things about DL. One, I mean, eventually I know the explicit form, but just to just because it is a principal divisor, I know that the degree of the, uh, DL is zero, and I know that the sum of DL is uh, the point at infinity. I mean, the degree is the sum of the coefficients. So the degree is uh, one plus one plus one minus three. So this is indeed zero. And the, the sum is, you just remove the brackets and you, you do the sum as you do it in the elliptic curve, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And indeed, if I do u plus v plus minus u plus v minus 3o, I get o, right? Yes. So, but, but I'm saying, how did I know that uh, how did I know about uh, um, about this part? I mean, I I, I want to calculate this. It's, this is kind of a reminder of of uh, stuff we did about the classification of divisors of of lines, but it's very easy to to recall because I'm saying I have a rational function LUV. I, I know that it has. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it has three zeros on, on the line, uh, namely the, the point U. This is a, a zero of this, uh, right? Because this is a line that passes through U and V, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I know that V is also a zero of this line, um, of this function. And I know that minus u plus v is also a, a zero of this uh, of this function, and uh, uh, this is a, 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 I mean this function is a polynomial of degree one. Polynomial of degree one cannot have more than three intersection points with a uh, with a curve of degree three. I mean, th this is like Bezout theorem or uh, I mean. It's, it's also st stuff that we proved uh, explicitly. So I, I know that there, there can be no other zero. I mean, there could be no other point P on E such that um, L U V of P is equal to zero. Okay? There exists no, no other P. Uh, are you with me or now? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, so I, 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 I'm saying I, I want to to understand the divisor of LUV. I I know what are the, the all the zeros of L of LUV. These are U, V, and uh, uh, minus U plus V. 
And we saw that each of them has degree, uh, uh, I mean, multiplicity one. So now uh, I look at this equation. I mean, I don't even need to know what M and B is, right? M and B depend on the coordinates of U and V, but I, I don't need to know what M and B are. Uh, uh, all I need to know is that this is a polynomial. Polynomial viewed as a rational function um, has one, uh, uh, one point that is a pole. It cannot have any other pole because it, it can never become infinity. Every x and y that you substitute into this polynomial will give you some finite value in the field. So the only possible to get a pole, namely to get, I mean, something that uh, spits out infinity, is if you substitute x equals infinity and y equals infinity. I mean, if you substitute the point at infinity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, I know that the only pole of this uh, 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 of this rational function is O. And now, uh, but in order to to pin down uh, precisely what is the divisor of L, I need to know what is the multiplicity of this pole uh, O uh, with respect to to L. So of course I can do uniformizers, but I'm saying I don't need I don't need to get into the details of uniformizers, because I know that the divisor has to satisfy that the coefficient of this plus the coefficient of this plus the coefficient of this plus whatever the coefficient is here has to be zero. You see? Yes. Okay, so I know that the coefficient, I mean, the multiplicity of, of O has to be minus three. It's like in order for the, the, the divisor to satisfy the, the degree of L, the, the degree of uh, uh, DL is, uh, is zero. Okay, so this is just a, a a recollection of how how to classify i mean how to to pin down precisely divisors of lines uh, and and this is this is one typical example but we we can also do the edge cases so if i take uh, u uh, this distinct from v but v equals to o then the the line that I'm, I'm considering, again, it's useful to have a, a picture. So, I have my curve, and this is, a, let's say, U. And, um, and here is the point at infinity, O. Oh. So uh, I'm considering the, the line between U and O. The line between U and O is going to intersect the curve in another point, namely minus U. And that's it, right? It's like it's not going to intersect the curve in any other, any other place. It's going to be a vertical line, right? So, so what I have is uh, uh, this divisor here it, there is a mistake. Well, no, it's not a mistake actually, but uh, let me just write it better. Uh, this is going to be so. Who are the who are the zeros of this um, of this line? I mean, of course, the point at infinity is always a, this is this is going to be still a polynomial. I mean. This is the, the polynomial LUV in this case is of XY is going to be some X minus C because this is how a vertical line in the in the plane looks like. I mean, it's the set of all solutions uh, uh, to, to all zeros of the polynomial X minus C. So you see, um, this this rational function has again it's a polynomial so it has a pole 
necessarily there is a unique pole at the point at infinity and uh, uh, and it has only two zeros on the curve u and minus u so the divisor must be bracket u plus bracket minus u this is the set of the, the all zeros each of them is of multiplicity one and then in order to to complement the uh, the thing I, I have to have multiplicity two at the at the point at infinity or uh, multiplicity minus two uh, is it okay nicolas or now yep okay and then lastly i do the tangent line at u so the tangent line at u let's call it let's write a better t um the tangent line at u this we saw so here is the picture right um and we saw that in the in the case of a tangent line um the multi i mean u is obviously a zero of of tu right tu is some uh, is some line i mean uh, tu is is again is again going to be some y minus mx plus m minus b uh, for some m and b uh, but in the case of the tangent line the 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 tangent point u has is a zero of the line of course but it is a zero of, of a, a multiplicity two okay this again we saw but uh, intuitively speaking this is because the the derivative vanish so if the derivative vanish it's like uh it increases the multiplicity um now what is the other zero of tu well i i have i have another point in which tu intersects the curve e namely minus 2u because how do you do a u plus u u plus u is you you draw the line the tangent line at u you look for the the other intersection point and you reflect so th this is to you so if this is to you it means that this this point is minus to you and minus to you is is an intersection point between the the line and the curve so it is it is a zero of the uh, of the line and it has to have multiplicity one because you already have multiplicity two and we cannot have multiplicity more than more than three when we intersect a line in a in a degree three curve okay this is again uh, i mean if you want the, the easiest uh, quotation is the uh, bezu theorem but we we did it also explicitly so so i know that the coefficient here must be one the coefficient here is two and this means that the coefficient here next to the o has to be minus three okay so i i know exactly how the divisor looks like and finally i look at the vertical line at u the vertical line at u well this actually we we discussed uh, uh, this is uh, the divisor of the vertical line is a, a bracket u plus bracket minus u minus uh, two o so so the vertical line at u is uh, what we define to be the 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 line that passes through a u and a minus u right so this is here and the tangent line is is the line that passes between u and u okay so this is this is this uh, are we okay with the geometry okay so so now uh, I, I remind you that we have a definition of um, um, of the whale pairing is um, 
is this kind of thing the generic uh, or generalized uh, well pairing is you need to take um, a divisor dq so you need to take two divisors dp and dq uh, D dp needs to be um, equivalent to p minus o equivalent to p minus o meaning that the, the difference of the two divisors is a principal divisor um, and dq similarly need to be need to be equivalent to q minus o and then i take um a, a rational i mean i take a rational function fdp whose divisor is ndp I, I know that I can do it because P is an n torsion point. P and Q, in fact, P and Q are n torsion points. So n P minus n O, and also n Q minus n O. These guys are principal divisors. I mean, they are equivalent to zero. And the reason they are principal is because, well, obviously the degrees add to zero. And um, and if and the sum of the each of these divisors is zero because n p minus n o is equal to zero uh, uh, since p is is an n torsion point. So I know that the need there has to be a rat so n d p is like n times this. And this is a principal divisor. So I know that there is a rational function, fdp, um, whose divisor is ndp. And, and similarly, there is a rational function, fdq, whose divisor is, is ndq. And the 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 way the well pairing in the generic form says, if you have uh, divisors uh, dp and dq that have a disjoint support and you take a uh, rational functions fdp and fdq um, that satisfy these two orange conditions then in order to evaluate the well pairing on on two points p and q you just need to do fdp the rational function fdp evaluated at the divisor dq and mod out or divide by a, 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 the rational function fdq evaluated at dq uh, so so i need I, I need rational i mean i need divisors dp and dq that have a disjoint support uh, in order to do this i um I pick a, a two two points R and S, um, and I take DP to be. It's like it's like a shift by it's like a shift of this this divisor, a P minus O, by by R. So I do P P plus R minus a minus R, and I I take DQ to be a shift of this divisor, by by the point S. And in order to guarantee that uh, these divisors have a disjoint support, I pick S. It, well, it's enough. There are many ways to do it, but but one of them is that uh, you take S to be a point that is uh, different than um, than all these other four points in the the orange uh, brackets. Um, and then it's really like a pedestrian task to um, to verify that these divisors dp and dq have this joint support is this okay yes i think okay and so and 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 of course the divisor dp is linearly equivalent to p minus o because dp is is p plus r minus r 
and then you do p plus r minus r and you subtract from it p minus o and th this is a divisor that has obviously the degrees um, add, add to zero because here i have minus one here i have one minus one one so in terms of the coefficients the sum of coefficients is zero um, and uh, if I if I remove the square brackets and I sum all the points, I get uh, p minus I mean p plus r minus r minus p uh, plus o is is o. So so this divisor the difference between dp and and this guy here is um, is a principal divisor. So so by definition it means that dp is equivalent to p minus o. This is what it means to for two divisors to be equivalent is that their difference is a principal divisor, and uh, uh, you can check similarly that uh, dq is equivalent to q minus o. So now I, I'm I'm all uh, uh, I'm all set. Um, I mean I, I know that for the dp and dq that I chose. Um, I can I can calculate the weight pairing by doing FDP evaluated at DQ divided by FDQ evaluated at DP. Now FDP and FDQ I still don't have any concrete um, um, form for them, but nevertheless I, I know what it means to say a, a rational function evaluated at a divisor. It means I mean, assuming that this rational function and the divisor have this joint support, it means that, for example, if I want to do FDP evaluate the DQ, then this is FDP evaluated at the point Q times FDP evaluated at, at O, sorry, uh, DQ, dq is not q minus o but rather uh, q plus r sorry q plus s um, and then here is uh, s to the minus one this is this is what it means to do fdp evaluated at the divisor dq right you, you take all the points that appear in the, the divisor FQ, sorry, uh, in the divisor DQ, and you plug them in into FDP, whatever FDP is, and whenever you have a, a coefficient of a point, I mean, like in, in DQ, I have a coefficient one for this point, and a coefficient minus one for this point. So uh, the coefficient I put in the, um, in the exponent and i multiply all of it okay so when i do f um, and this i abbreviate fdp to fp and i abbreviate f uh, dq to fq uh, and so in order to to do the weight pairing i need to do this quotient but this quotient is, well, the, the numerator is this guy. And the denominator is this guy. So now what I'm left is in order to calculate the whale pairing, um, I need to be able to uh, um, evaluate, well, to, to have, yeah, what is the, I mean, to, I need to be able to evaluate FP, even though I don't know what, what is the concrete form of FP. I need to, to be able to say what is FP evaluated at some uh, general point X, right? This X. So, and of course, if I can do it for FP, then I can, I can, do, I can do it for FQ. 
I mean, P and Q are, are um, uh, some general uh, n torsion points. And if I if I know how to do F P of X and F Q of Y for any X and Y, then I know how to calculate the weight pairing. So now um, we uh, we want to uh, we want a procedure to calculate F P of X for some general X. And for some integer k, I define a kind of an intermediate function, fk. fk is a, a, a rational function on E. That has a divisor of this form. Uh, and if you remember, uh, um, a, a divisor of a, um, I mean, a, a given divisor does not define a unique rational function. But if I, I mean, if I say that the leading coefficient is one, then it defines a, a unique rational function. So um, I, I pick, I, I pick a rational function f k that is monic, namely it has a leading coefficient one. And the, the divisor of it is, uh, is this. I need to check that the, this divisor in green is, a, a, is indeed a principal divisor. But this is very easy because I, I look at the coefficients. This is k and minus k. They, they cancel. And here I have minus 1 and 1. So they also cancel. Um, and if I sum all the points, I mean, if I remove the brackets and I sum in the elliptic curve, I get kp plus kr minus kr <coughs> um, minus kp plus o. So this cancel with this and I get o. Okay, so this is a principal divisor. I know that there exists a rational function f or fk. Uh, that has uh, this divisor. And why did I, I say that these are intermediate functions? It's because when, when k is equal to n, I look at fn. What is fn? It's n p plus r minus n r, right? I mean, when n is equal, when k is equal to n, I have n p plus r minus n r minus n p, but n p is o plus o. Okay, so this is equal to this. And this guy, I remind you, this is the divisor of f p. So if I choose f p to be also monic, then I know that Fn has to be equal to Fp, whatever they are. Okay, so this is all. This is all like uh, abstract considerations uh, uh, that tell me that if I if I calculate the intermediate functions Fk, and I know how to evaluate them on a on a general point x then eventually I will know how to evaluate fp of x. Okay? And I think the last thing we did uh, uh, in the last session is uh, uh, this proposition that says, if I take, so I have this fk, right? Now I, I have, I take uh, uh, two integers a and b, and I consider the divisor of a fa times fb times the line between ap and bp divided by the vertical line that passes through a plus bp then something something uh, um, nice happens it, it, it turns out that this divisor is is f of a, a plus b I mean, it's the same as the divisor of f a plus b. And again, since we can assume all the time that in the, the original constructions, we chose uh, um, functions that are 
uh, uh, that have a leading coefficient one, then uh, uh, equality between divisors of functions really implies equality of, of functions. So, uh, uh, so I will have equality of, of these two rational functions in, in orange. Okay, and this was this is a, a very simple calculation. I mean, uh, I don't want to repeat it, uh, but it's it's very straightforward. You uh, you just need to remember that the divisor of a product is the sum of divisors, and the divisor of a quotient is the the difference of divisors. And we have a a, a description of of divisors of each of the uh, each of the elements in the product. Uh, so we we can do the calculation. Uh, is this okay? This was a long recap, but I I, I want you to be like fully on board. Okay. So now the next lemma. Uh, ah, or maybe corollary. Yeah, this is a corollary. Um, the divisor of f k square times the the tangent line at k p. This is for any k. Uh, the tangent line at kp divided by the vertical line at 2kp is equal to the divisor of f2k. And the reason is very simple. I mean, just look at what we did. Uh, you put a, a, it's a proof, take a, a equals B equals K in, uh, in the, the previous proposition. Right, if I take A equals B equals K, then I have like FK, FK. If, if A is equal to B, then the line through AP and BP, I mean, A is equal to B, so this is the line between AP and, and AP. This is the same as the, the tangent line at, uh, at AP, or but A is equal to K, so the tangent line at KP. And here I have V, uh, K plus KP, okay? And this is the divisor of F, K plus K, so F to K. Uh, and then maybe I think that now it's the last proposition, last lemma, last lemma before the, the algorithm. Um, if I take F1, I want to evaluate the, the divisor of F1 then I claim that this is the same as the divisor of the vertical line at P plus R divided by the line between P and R. And uh, this is another, another straightforward calculation. Um, Let's do F1 by definition is a function that has a divisor um, P plus R minus R minus P plus O. 
Okay, this I, I can I can show you. Um, yeah, so just just a uh, substitute k equals one here. You get p plus r minus r minus p plus o. Um, and, and the right hand side is equal. Well, what is the divisor of, of v p plus r? Um, it's p plus r. Remember the, the vertical line through a p plus r has uh, two zeros: a p plus r and minus p plus r. And it has a, a one pole of the of degree that must be two. So minus two o. This is the divisor of a vertical line at p plus r. And from that, I need to subtract the divisor of lp plus of of lpr. But the divisor of lpr, I mean, I, I know it, I know it as well. It has a p as a zero. It has r as a zero, and it has minus p plus r as a third zero. This is the, the ordinary line between p and r. Um, and of course, it must have a pole of degree three. So this is minus um, three o. Um, and uh, okay, and now I just uh, I just do the calculation. It's uh, uh, it's exactly p plus r. Um, these two, this is the divisor of L p r. And um, and now okay, so this cancels. Sorry, this this stays, but this cancels with this. Um, this minus two o cancels with this uh, uh, minus 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 three o. But I have some remaining o, so plus o, uh, and then minus p minus r. So this is in, indeed equal to the left hand side. Uh, is it okay? This is a, like a, it's a simple calculation. So I, I guess now is a good time to take a break. Uh, and then uh, we come back, we do the I described the algorithm and um, and I prove the correctness and the, and do the complexity of it. Good. Okay.
Okay, so um, so so let's let's go back to uh, the actual algorithm and remember. Uh, just the setup, uh, I mean, we have two points. And um, we have a, a rational function that we know exists uh, abstractly. Um, and... and it it needs to satisfy that uh, the, the divisor of fp is this n p plus r minus n r where um r is some some point on the curve uh, so so now i i write the binary uh, expansion of of n. Uh, the binary expansion is like a, a sum i equals one. Sorry, zero up to some t. T t is approximately log log n, uh, and this is two uh, two to the i n i. I, I mean, for example n equals three, what will be the, the, the expansion? I have um, three is equal to um, I mean n n one n zero equal to one times uh, two to the zero plus uh, two to the one times n1 and n1 here is going to be equal to one as well okay so this this is the the standard uh, binary expansion so uh, the ni or zero one uh, and and t is approximately log n and and now um, the input. So we have we have the inputs. Uh, and the output is going to be um, FP evaluated at Q. And this I call X. Okay, so step one, I set x or x1 rather to be the vertical line at p plus r evaluated at q divided by the line between p and r. And again, evaluated at Q. Second step, I let X be equal to X1. Uh, then I let Z equals P. And now I start, uh, I start a loop. So for um, t equals, sorry, i equals t minus one. Um, up to zero. I do a, a for loop. And in this for loop, I have um, let's say 4.1 um, I take x to be x square 
times the, the tangent line at z evaluated at q divided by the vertical line at 2z evaluated at q. And 4.2, um, I set z to be equal to 2z. So I, I, double, I double the point. And, and then 4.3, I do an if. So if ni is equal to 1, then um, I, I further set, this is 4.3.1, I further set uh, x to be x times x1 times the, the line between z and p evaluated at q divided by the vertical line at the point z plus p evaluated at q. And um, 4.3.2, I set a z to be z plus b. Okay, and that's it. That's, uh, so let's say, and if, and, and, and for. Okay, so, uh, ah, and, and of course, uh, uh, I return, I return x. Okay, so, uh, um, the main proposition, um, this algorithm, has um, complexity log n of um, um, points addition in E and upon termination Um, z is equal to np, which is equal to O, because P is an n torsion point, and um, an x is equal to fp of q. Okay. So this is the uh, the statement. the The first part of the statement, I mean, namely the complexity, this is really easy, because um, all I need to do, I mean, I have some constant uh, steps, uh, and then what matters for the complexity is uh, um, what is the size of the for loop. And uh, what is the the number of uh, um, operations I need to do in each iteration of the for loop? So the size of the for loop is log n, right? The size of the, the for loop is uh, is t, and t is approximately log n. I mean, it's like uh, plus minus one or something like that. Um, and what what do I need to do in each of the the iteration of the for loop? 
Well, I need to do this X is an, is is some number, right? Uh, and I need to evaluate what is a, a, the tangent line at Z. Tangent line at Z is some polynomial, polynomial, and I substitute in this polynomial, uh, I substitute the coordinate of Q, so that's that's not expensive. And also V to Z Q, once I know V to Z, I mean, once I calculate the polynomial V to Z, then I need to evaluate it in Q. What do I need to, in order to do, to calculate the, the polynomial V to Z? I need to know what is 2 Z. Once, once I know the coordinates of 2 Z, I, I have a formula for the, the vertical line at, at 2 Z. So I need, here I need to do, one a, a, a point addition. Then here I need to do also another a point addition. And here I will, here, here I, I need to do another point addition and here another point addition. So altogether it's like a four, four point, point addition in the, in the case that I get into the if loop. Uh, and so this is this is really f four times uh, log n point addition at, at worst case. Uh, so so the complexity is uh, complexity is very clear. Uh, is this okay? Uh, it's okay for the complexity. I'm not sure I understand why is it done like this. Like it's a, basically a double and add algorithm in some sort, but I, yeah, uh, why is it complete? So it's a bit, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, I didn't uh, prove completeness yet, but uh, I'm saying complexity. Okay. Yeah. So, so now, um, um, for, for completeness, Um, if if t is equal to zero, t I remind you t is the 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 number of uh, of n i's in the binary expansion expansion of n. So if t is equal to zero, then then n is either zero or one. If n is zero, I have nothing to do. If n is one. Uh, then it's also it's it's very clear. I mean, uh, um, because I, I don't get into the for loop, right? So if n is equal to if n is equal to one, if t is equal to zero, uh, and let me write it in a different color. So if if t is equal to zero, and um, n is equal to one. This this means really that n zero is equal to one. Um, and then I don't do the the for loop because the for loop starts from t minus one. So uh, so I have a, I have a, a nullified the for loop. Uh, what is x one? X one. Remember we had a lemma. So this is v of p plus r uh, uh, divided by um, by l p plus uh, p uh, p r, and let's look at the lemma: v p plus r divided by l p r is f one. Right? I mean, they have the same divisors, and we assume that uh, 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 both of them are monic, so equality of divisors really implies equality of rational functions. So these two rational functions are, are equal. And in particular, if I evaluate uh, one of them, at, I mean, if I evaluate both of them at Q, I get the same thing. So in order to get VP plus R divided by LP plus R evaluated at, at Q, this is F1 of Q. Okay, so, e, and so if, uh, uh, n is equal to one, I get that x1 
is equal to F1 of Q, which is by definition, I mean, N is equal to one, right? So this is Fn of Q. And Fn, we, we saw that this is Fp of Q. Okay? And uh, X is equal to X1. And Z is equal to P. So uh, upon termination, if N is equal to one, I get what I want. Now, um, what about uh, n equals, uh, I mean, t, t bigger than 1? So uh, are we, we clear here, actually, uh, before I erase? And now you, you yeah. follow? Yes, I think, yeah. I mean, uh, all I'm saying here, for the n equals 1 case, I'm using the lemma. This by the lemma, mm -hmm. this is by the lemma, uh, X1 is going to be F1 of Q and F1 is, I mean, since, uh, since and this is Fn of Q and Fn of Q, we had, uh, this is by, by construction, by design, Fn of Q is Fp of Q, okay? And, and that's, that's what I want the output uh, to be. Now, what if a, a t is equal to one? So if a, a t is equal to one, then I have, a, a, of course, a n is um, a n zero plus uh, two times n one. Uh, so, so n, let's say n is bigger than one because n equals one we already covered. And it, it could be a, a, up to three, right? So, so n is either equal to two or, or equal to three. Um, the, the n one, N1 is non-zero, right? Because the in the, the binary expansion, I assume that NT is non-zero. Otherwise, the, the sum would not be until T. It would be uh, until some, some uh, earlier index. So, um, so, so N is, is uh, either two or three. Um, I, I, we already calculated that in uh, after the first iteration, x1 is going to be f1 of e, of q. Um, and now in the second, in the second step, x is going to be f1 of q as well. Um, z is going to be p. And now I enter the for loop. The for loop is, uh, it has only one iteration. Uh, in this iteration, I, I well, uh, I say that x is x squared times, times this, times this uh, um, tangent line at z modulo a vertical line at 2z. Uh, so what is this? So 4.1. Uh, X is going to be F1 Q square times a um, tangent line at Z divided by vertical line at 2Z and all that evaluated at Q. But we had another lemma that this is equal to f of one plus one q. So f two of q. You remember this? This We had a lemma without the q, but the lemma is more general. It tells you that the two, two rational functions are equal. 
So uh, let me just show you the lemma. You see, this is a, or the, the cor it, it was a corollary from, from a lemma. Okay, this is for any K. Um, is this clear for 4.1 is clear? Yes, yes. Okay, and now 4.2. Um, Z, I know what is Z, Z is P. So now Z is equal to 2P. And now I get into the for loop. Uh, the for loop, let's assume, I mean, okay, if the for loop is, it has one iteration, uh, and this one iteration is, I mean, whether N0 is, uh, is is zero or one. So let's let's say I don't do the, the if loop. I mean, I don't do the, the iteration. It means that, uh, say, N, N0 equals to zero. I don't do the, the if iteration, then I, I return F2 of Q. But if N0 is, is zero, it means that N is equal to two. So I, I return F2 of Q. Um, F2 of Q, which is Fn of Q, which is Fp of Q, as, as, I, as I wanted. And indeed, I also return z to be two uh, two p, which is which is another uh, another part of the statement. And, and now let's suppose that n zero is equal to one, which means, of course, that n is equal to three. So if n zero is equal to one, um. I do get into the if loop, into the if statement. And what I do in the if statement is I take X and I put it, so this is four, three, one. Um, I, uh, um, I put the value of X to be equal to x times x1 times this uh, quotient, a uh, line between z, z and p and vertical line of uh, z plus p, both evaluated at q. So what, what is x? What is x here? x is f1. What is x1? x1 is also f1. So I get f1 square q times this, uh, this line, I mean, this line between z, p, and uh, between z and p, and uh, divided by the vertical line uh, at, uh, sorry, but, um, it's, it's a yeah, 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 it's, it's going to be f, um, two square. F, f1, sorry, so e, uh, so. Because x is f2 yeah, 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 so yeah. x is f2 of q x is, I mean, x before is f2 of q. So now x is going to be f2 of q times f1 of q yeah. times this line, a line between z, z and p evaluated at q divided by the vertical line at z plus p evaluated at q. But we had a lemma by the lemma this is F3 of Q, right? This, I reminded the lemma. Or the, again, the, the corollary of the, the lemma, okay? Well, you, sorry, you, why is the corollary is useful here? Because we're not using the same. Yes, it's not the corollary, it's it's the, the, the lemma. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's yeah, uh, here A, A and B are different. Um, so, so I get F3 of Q and, and then uh, in 4.32, I, I put Z to be 3Z, 3P. 
And that's it. I, I end I end the if the if statement and I end the for loop and I return x. So again, I returned what I needed to return. You see, and uh, and you can prove by by simple induction that the the whole algorithm works. Uh, I think it's it's not. Uh, it's not very enlightening to uh, to do it. It's a bit, a bit of a formal game. Uh, but what what you need to understand is that I mean, in the the the, the kind of all the steps before uh, before the for loop, um, I I just I just get uh, like all the time the same thing. I mean, I get. Uh, X, X and X1 to be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, F1 of Q and Z, Z to be 2P. A and then in, in the uh, in the for loop, I uh, either I increase the, I mean, X is going to be F, Fn, I mean, X is going to be F, uh, um, Fk of, of Q for some K. And, when I do this step 4.1, I increase, I mean, if X was F uh, K of Q, then it's going to be now F K plus one by the lemma. And depending of whether N I is equal to one or not, I, I do it one more time. Okay, so either I increase X from F K of Q to fk plus one of q, uh, uh, and then if ni is equal to, to one, uh, then I increase x to be uh, from fk of q to fk plus two of q. Uh, and since I started with x equal uh, uh, f one of q, then I know that uh, that I get f fn of q basically. Can you could you reshow the lemma again because I'm struggling to see why so I followed your orange explanation I'm just trying to see why the z is important to update what what role the, does the z play here and I'm, I'm not the z quite, because yeah. this, the z is going to be used when I do the the line I mean the, I take the vert I mean you see so when I, I do, about the F2, F, F1 becomes S3 and things like this, but at the, the Z part, I'm, I'm a bit struggling maybe. Yeah, so so you see what is happening here. I mean, Z is equal to, uh, um, I mean, in order to use the, the lemma, not the lemma, it's the proposition, right? You see that the proposition requires that in the else I have a, 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 a p comma b p, and in the v I have a plus b p. Mm. Okay, so so I need to know that the, the z really fits into the. I mean, here let's say here I go from f k of q to f k plus one of q, but this depends on on z to be to be of a particular value. I mean, here Z needs to be 2P two, two in, or, in order to use the proposition. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, and so, so the Z is kind of a demi variable uh, that you, you keep throughout the, the algorithm in order to use the lemma or the, the proposition, basically. Makes sense. Uh, but all we're doing here is we have this lemma that allows us to, to go from fk of q to fk uh, plus 1 of q. And we, we just uh, 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 set, set the stage so that we do uh, um, exactly n, uh, uh, n updates for x uh, uh, from f1 of q up to f f n of q and the, the way to, to do it i mean see, to do it efficiently you you uh, you do the binary expansion of course it's not the only way to do it 
that's full. Yeah, okay, so this uh, this is clear. Yeah. And, and you see that this is very efficient, right? It's like, uh, I mean, additions or addition of points on elliptic curve is not is not so easy, um, but it's not super expensive. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you you probably know better than me. I mean, you you work with it. Also, uh, since we we don't have much time left. Uh, uh, because we're probably not going to enter a new topic now, unless you have a thing. But I wanted to ask, like, because this is the Miller loop, right? Yeah, Miller. Yeah, sometimes it's called the Miller loop. Yeah. And uh, in Miller loop, I know you can also batch multiple pairs of points together. It's just an extension of this algorithm, basically, where you have uh, different pairs of P and Q, and maybe you you gain some optimization by keeping the same Z or something. I don't know. Uh, because I know that all the APIs as used before were able to batch pairs of points so to compute uh, directly the the final pairing about E, P, and Q times E, L, and S times E, T, and U. I think that is new. But uh, this is, um, I mean, okay, first I should say there are like uh, multiple versions of um, the Miller algorithm in the, in the literature. Um, the the version I'm I'm presenting is first of all it, it doesn't uh, compute the pairing in itself. Yeah, but we still need to get the the final root of unity at the end. Thing, I guess, but uh... yeah, I mean, it, so okay. It, I mean, the short answer I don't I don't know off the top of my head how to do it in batch. I I can believe that it's possible. Um, basically. The, as you can see, the backbone of the whole uh, the whole algorithm is these observations uh, uh, that are given here in this proposition, right? Um, once so, if you have a version of this proposition for multiple uh, uh, points, yeah. some kind of batch version, then I imagine you could do the the batch version of the algorithm. Um, but the, in the literature, you may find um, uh, Miller algorithms that calculate um, in, in literature. Uh, you can find uh, uh, something like, uh, for example, you take FP such that the divisor of fp is precisely a, a np minus no okay and you 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 want to calculate fp of q so we did a, a, a more general uh, uh, version right we we had like a, this divisor was a, a translated a bit np plus r uh, minus nr but uh, you may find in the literature that r is equal to o and then uh, and then it can simplify uh, but but it would push the it would push the weight because eventually you would need to evaluate um, the well pairing so it would push the uh, some weight of computation to to another place um yeah uh what else what, is this answering your question nicolas yeah yeah thanks i mean i have plenty of questions now that we reach the pairing stage yeah <laughs> like for, I mean, uh, in practice we also use uh points on the tickers not torsion points so how do we because right now p and p and q so are this is all, uh, in practice you always you basically um you take the point, you take the curve. Uh, basically, you have a, um, a, a, an embedding degree. Um, let's say embedding degree, uh, what's the usual notation? Uh, D, I don't know, uh, of E means that, um, I mean, e, 
E is defined over some uh, FP or FQ. And embedding degree D means that uh, if I take E of FP to the D, and I take the n torsion points here, I already get the full n torsion points. Okay. And how do you get the first n torsion point? Torsion point? So you see, I mean, we know that e, e, e k, uh, sorry, e, e n. This is K, okay? This K is like the, the base field uh, uh, over which the, the equation of the elliptic curve is defined. And E bracket N is um, the set of all, uh, um, of all N torsion points in the algebraic closure, right? You remember, this, this is the, yes. the definition of the, the N torsion points. But what is what is E of, of the algebraic closure? E of the algebraic closure is simply the union of all E of the of the extensions. Mm -hmm. P uh, let's say PK. Now this is a finite set. A and this and let's say here K. Uh, is bigger or equal to one. And this is a, a, a union of infinitely many set, a finite set that is included in a in a chain. This is a chain, right? This is like E of um, F P to the K is contained in E of F P to the, I don't know, 2K, mm -hmm. right? This This thing is a chain, so I have a finite set that is contained in an infinite chain. It means that it has to be contained in some finite stage of the, the chain. And the embedding degree is the minimal, the minimal place in this chain for which uh, uh, I, I, I get all the n, n torsion points. You see, th this is how you, you pass from a... a from this, I mean, the algebraic closure is, is good for theoretical uh, um, considerations, but eventually in practice, we need to have a finite, uh, like a finite set. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we choose elliptic curves that has a, a, a small embedding degree. And mm -hmm. yes. Go, go, go. I thought you were finished. Yeah, uh, yeah so, um, okay, so then uh, I have e, e of n, and um, what do I, okay, I guess I need to, to prepare a little bit before I say something uh, um, solid on that. Uh, let me, let me look what I wrote. Uh, yeah, but but go ahead if you have another question. Oh, it's, it's a follow-up question to what you explained. So you, you, I understand now that instead of considering points in the full uh, algebraic closure, we can only consider points on the elliptic curve based on FP to the D. But still, my question remains that when we do pairing in practice, our inputs points are in the curve are defined over E of FP, not over E of FP D. And so, how do we? No, so we. Uh, things that's the. But, we just we just consider the extension like we just put zeros to the over coordinate or something like this. Like no, no, no. I mean, so um, we take a prime. Uh, so we take a pr uh, some. Uh, let me let me just look for something. I mean, if, uh, the the.
Yeah, I mean, this is like, we want to extract a, a type two pairing from this. So we, we write, let's say E of F, Q, F, P. Um, the, the number of points is, is some, um, is some H times R where R is prime. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we look at H at, at ER. Okay, and we, we are guaranteed that ER is contained uh, in E of F P to the D where D is the embedding degree. Okay, and we, we simply look at ER. I mean, e, e, ER is going to be, in fact, so ER is going to be ZR times ZR. And in fact, we look at a, at a subgroup G1 is a, a subgroup of, of ZR, I mean, of ER, which is uh, isomorphic to ZR. Okay, so you always you always live in this R torsion point where R is a prime, and you do the and this is you you use the 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 weight pairing of degree R, right? Ah, uh, so we are we are all of pairing that we use in practice are actually uh, R torsion points, like all the yes. points that we use already are already R torsion points by default because they yes. are. In Good of your ah okay 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 and this this age is called the cofactor yeah and mm -hmm. what you want I mean the security of this uh, of the whole thing really depends on R and not on age so so you want age to be a, as minimal as possible mm -hmm. right uh, but the, this 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 is like the design of of pairing friendly curves. Yep. Uh, what you I, I imagine what you need in practice is something like you already have the the pairing friendly curve so somebody designed a, an elliptic curve that has a, a small age uh, cofactor and you just need to know the prime and then you need to know how to how to extract a, a z z a zr a subgroup from the the ER torsion points, but that's it's usually very easy because uh, the end, the R torsion points are uh, uh, ZR times ZR, so you have uh, you basically have two canonical subgroups of uh, of si size uh, ZR. Um, I think usually they are uh, taken as some like kernel of the Frobenius map. This again we didn't talk about it, but uh, uh yeah that's uh, that's roughly the the way you do it and now there is a, 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 this issue of twists um but again i uh, i yeah. feel we are like uh, yeah unfortunately we don't have uh, a lot of time but uh, um the the twists are uh, uh, another another way to increase the efficiency uh and so usually the embedding degree is uh, uh, is is smaller than 20. So we are working in um, I mean the security look we have I mean in this case we have ER it's going from ER uh, uh, times ER into um, F uh, P to the D. Uh, in fact, it's it's going to be the 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 roots of unity, the R roots of unity in F P to the D. Um, so the security of the the uh, of the pairing depends on on two things. Uh, uh, one is the the difficulty to do the elliptic curve a discrete logarithm problem 
in ER or in, in E basically. And two is to do the discrete logarithm um, in a FP to the D. And you want to, you in order to, to gain maximum security, you want that uh, the difficulty uh, of these these two is 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 approximately I mean similar. And so that's uh, there's an inherent uh, trade-off between performance and security because basically we want R to be very high, I guess, but then it impacts performance. Uh, um, bo both also D impacts performance. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, and D and D impact performance. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So but we need to be very high because otherwise uh, it's easier to factorize. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. But the, the advantage of elliptic curves is that it doesn't need to be astronomically high hmm. because the discrete logarithm problem in, in elliptic curves is quite hard. It's hmm. not like, a, it's not anywhere near the discrete logarithm problem in, a, Never in, seen. in, in like a integers modulo or prime or something. It's, it's much harder. So, so you can choose a prime to be not astro astronomically high, but just just high. Uh, okay, so I didn't say how to extract G two, but G two, yeah, a G two is going to be um, in this case. G2, you're going to do um, ER um, intersection with the uh, eigenvectors or, or eigenvalues of the, the Q Frobenius map. This is one uh, one canonical uh, choice, but again, we we didn't talk about the Frobenius map. So uh, I apologize, but that's that's the constraints we are uh, we are given. Uh, uh, but I just want to to indicate that basically, uh, um, what you do in practice is not very different from what we did. I mean, you need to have a. a, a, a like a, a non-symmetric pairing. So for this, you need the, the Tate pairing or a, a, one of the others, the Eta pairing and so on. And, and there you have a canonical way, G1, by the way, um, is can be chosen canonically um, to be an ER intersection the the one eigen values of the Frobenius map. Okay, uh, that's like just the uh, slogans, I guess, for uh, for now. But um, but you the point is you have canonical ways to to choose the G one and the G two, and uh, uh, I mean, assuming you 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 pick some pairing friendly elliptic curve, you you have some guarantees. Um, on uh, uh, various stuff, uh, including security. Um, if you want to find a generator, that's also not a problem. So, um, so for example, to find so to find a, a generator of uh, G one. Uh, Again, G1 is isomorphic to the cyclic group of order R, where R is a prime. So it is it is a, it is generated by some unique L. I mean, not unique, but it, it, it is. You can write it as generated by one element. And um, so uh, uh, again, we write uh, uh, the number of points on E as H times R. And um, uh, 
we you find the point P such that HP is non zero. If HP is non zero, um, then uh, since R HP is zero and R is prime, uh, HP is uh, a point of order R. So if you find the point P such that HP is non-zero and HP belongs to G1, then you, you found the generator to G to G1. Uh, okay, so this is just uh, sp sporadic stuff on uh, uh, kind of the the, the more uh, uh, applied applied properties of uh, pairings. Uh, but yeah, I I guess uh, I guess we should end here. Uh, other questions or maybe requests for next time? No. I mean, uh, um, in terms of requests, I'm happy to go over another pairings or maybe go into these uh, twisted uh, sexist stuff because I <laughs> twisted curve, whatever, um, these things, anything that can fit into ours. Well, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm afraid we, we cannot do it. We have one more session left. Uh, yeah. What I can do, I can uh, I can present the Tate pairing, but without the proof. Um, and maybe talk a little bit about the Frobenius map. And then the Frobenius map, uh, once you know the pro properties of the Frobenius, but you can all read it in the book. It's, it's like, I think it's a... Uh, written pretty well um, so basically once you know the properties of the Frobenius map uh, you can do the Tate pairing and uh, uh, this I mean and using using the stuff I described now it gives you uh, um, an asymmetric pairing which is pretty efficient um, yeah. Uh, okay. So I will I will think about what to do next time. I I, I guess I will prepare a little bit about it. But uh, the 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 twists. I mean, the twists. I think are uh, 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 too complicated to to fit in in this uh, tiny se session we have left. Uh, so that we will have to to skip. But uh, we can talk about it when we meet. Uh, all right, so all right. that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day.